And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remix. The Spinner Rack. Episode 62. 62. I'm your host, Brian <laughs> Adams, joined by my co-host, <laughs> the, the Laughing Man, Junior Ruiz. Oh, dude, it was funny. It's good. It's good. It's good. I think I'm going to do that the whole episode. Every time you, know you say something, I'll just repeat it. Yeah, like real quiet. Play, play Shadow. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. I like it. I like it. So... so the last two weeks since we've been gone, Fear the, the Walking Dead is on. Okay, Dead's you can on. stop. <laughs> uh, Fear the Walking Dead, I'm sure you didn't watch it. Of course I watched not. it. Did you watch it? No. No? No? Nope. Nope. Are you going to watch it? Nope. Have you seen the internet reaction to it? I heard it was bad. It like, wasn't bad. Nobody's liking it. People are hating the shit out of it, but it's not that bad. It's really I, not that bad. What I saw was that people are giving it the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Gotham approach. Where it's an episode or two in, and they're bashing the hell out of it. Like, you got to give a show time to develop. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, I didn't think it was that bad. Um, they've, you don't, know, let me make this perfectly clear, though. The only reason I'm not watching it is because I'm so far behind on The Walking Dead. Oh, it has absolutely nothing to do with the regular show. Really? For it now? Takes, it starts, it's at the start of the zombie outbreak. Okay. So yeah. things haven't, you know, spun into where it's at on the main show yet. The only there is other outrage I've heard about it, but I don't know if you're gonna mention it, so I'll wait. Um no, it's just people are like ridiculously complaining about dumb things, you know. Somebody said that it over glamorizes drug abuse because one of the main characters is a drug addict. Okay. But I didn't see it that way. Okay. So what's your give me the give me the complaint here because I didn't really have a whole lot to say about Everybody it. who's died has been black. That's Everybody what I read. Who's died I, I don't know. Black. That's just something that I've read. Everybody who's died so far on the show has been black. Holy crap. What? You know what? I, I, I now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and be <laughs> like, that's that's pretty pretty close, dude. Is it? I don't know. Um, I that's something I read. I haven't I'm watched just, it. So I'm going to spoil the hell out of the show. So if you haven't watched it, spoiler alert, you're just getting it ruined for you because you're here. Plus, you'll never watch it. Yeah, anyway, I don't probably. Care. I'll watch it. Like, um, the first episode, this kid wakes up after a heroin binge in like a junkie church. Okay. And he finds. Uh, All out of the way, Rick woke up from the coma in the yeah, hospital. Yeah, kind of. He finds this girl ripping out a, a, I believe it was a black guy's throat. Okay. With her teeth. She's okay. a zombie. So immediately, this was my first in, issue with the show. Is it's not this. It's not what I wanted. Like, I wanted a little more... How they got to that point. How they got there, instead of it's just, boom, it's yeah. here. Um, and then there is a kid that gets... Uh, that, there's a black kid that gets killed in an altercation with the drug head kid, who later becomes a zombie and then gets, like, run over a couple times. And, um, and then there's a black... The school, the school principal is black, and he gets turned to a zombie. So, yeah, it's, you know... Like, as far as I can recall, the three zombie involved scenes did involve black people two of which were black which means three three dead black black males well that's one of the things i read online is, is and the fact that uh people are just saying it's boring yeah like it's like well you gotta give it time yeah that's you know it's like me and melissa sat down and watched the first episode um we actually watched both of them we got lucky the boy fell asleep because you know you don't want to watch those shows with a little kid because they're pretty graphic right we got lucky he fell asleep and we're actually able to watch both episodes nice um it wasn't bad, man. You know, like you said, it's, in my opinion, more excited to watch it than Gotham. Like, Gotham, to me, was a chore to watch. Really? I oh, enjoyed yeah. Gotham. Really? That's the one show that I actually caught. Like, I didn't watch every single episode. I think I towards the end. I, I watched them all up to... Uh, you watched the whole season, though, right? I watched the whole season. I watched up to, like, when Fish Mooney was uh, captured or whatever, and she was, like, with all these people underground and stuff. Uh-huh. That's about as far as I got. So I know there's still, like, another three or four episodes. Yeah. Um, that, that show, man... It comes out on DVD next week. I'll be, actually, no. What's today? Wednesday? Uh, it came out yesterday okay. on DVD and Blu-ray. I'll yeah. end up picking it up. No, that's all right. I'll pass. Um, it's That's honestly the... I'll probably wait and see if it's on sale for Black Friday. It's the most subpar superhero show of the superhero shows. Well, it's not a superhero show. Well, still, you know. That's that's the first problem right there. But it is. But no, it it's is. not. But it is. It's not. But it is. It's a show about a cop. But it is. But it is. But it's not. It's Jim Gordon. It's a superhero show. Jim granted, Gordon is not a superhero. Granted, the main characters are not superheroes. One of them will be. Just because it takes place in a town where there's a superhero that will eventually be there? And there's all kinds of supervillains coming up. Man, it's, not it's a, a comic book show. show. All right, it's a it's, comic book yeah, show. Yeah, okay, that's better. All right, I stand corrected. It is a comic book there show. There you go. That's, that's better. And it is 
the worst of the comic book shows. You think so? Absolutely. I don't know, man. I like Gotham. I didn't, man. That's amazing because most people are like, probably oh, because I so I haven't watched anything else. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, if, well, if, no, because I've watched some of the Flash, which I can't wait for that to come out so I can binge watch it. I know, it. man. I can, Flash was so good. Um, I didn't watch all of it. I watched some of that's it. That's like a show when it, when they put that on a blue, totally picking it up. Yeah. Whereas we're on about to hit season four of Arrow, and I have like no. I haven't watched season three. No interest of picking that up on DVD. But I, I watched the, uh, the the trailer for season four of Arrow. It looks good. Okay, I was gonna get to that. Season four trailer of Arrow does look good indeed. Um, I'm actually surprised that they're to see that Oliver has made a home for himself with mm-hmm. with. I'm sorry, Alicity, as people have taken to call them. I'm not happy about that. Uh, no, you don't I, like Alicity. Nah, I don't like it. What would you have preferred? I, I prefer him with anybody else. I'm selfish. She's hot. Nice. So no, but I honestly don't like that's that's too easy to go ahead and finally give into that relationship. Why not make it to the point where she has to realize she'll never have Oliver? Well, you know what? It's it's like I said. I didn't watch the third season, so I don't know how that it's developed. It's been three there. seasons. It's been three seasons of this back and forth thing to the point where, like last season, was all about him becoming the successor to Ra's al Ghul. Okay. And he pretty much leaves and goes with Roz and then just, like, turns his back on everybody. But ultimately, it's all part of a plan. Okay. You know, so, I mean, it was just, it's a story arc that's been coming. I think it's good to, good to do it. Um, it's finally adding, going to add a lighter tone to the show, which I think it needs. Um, the costume looks excellent, man. I really like it. It really looks like Green Arrow, finally. Yeah. Um, I don't like Diggle's costume at all. You know, I posted on our Facebook page that it looked like Magneto helmet, kind of, yeah. and somebody was like, it's nowhere near Magneto, it's more Spartan. We're like, where'd you get Magneto from? Because well, I looked Ma- at it, and it reminded me of Magneto. Yeah, Magneto's helmet kind of looks like a Spartan helmet anyway. But yeah. I thought it looked like kind of Magneto-ish. It looked but like Juggernaut from X-Men 3. Totally, except less clunky. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like, explain to me why Diggle now has to have a superhero outfit and run around. I liked him as the dude with the co- with the gun, the soldier with the gun, just kind of playing the background. Why does he now have to wear a leather jacket and well, a Spartan helmet? If you would have watched season three, that, well, that's what I said. Explain you it know, to me. He okay. He kind of steps up when Oliver leaves. It leaves this void, right? And then he and uh, the new Black Canary, which is uh, what's your face? Uh, it's um, God Laurel. Laurel. Ooh. Laurel Lance. So the two of them plus uh, the Adam have kind of like stepped up to fill the void. Okay. That was left in the wake of Oliver going to be the new Roz. Okay. Um, so I mean, it's it's understandable why. I just I think a lot of people were hoping they were going to go more the Guardian route with him and make him like the Guardian. Right. Which would have been cool. I could I would have dug that. So he's not the Guardian. So he's not the Guardian. He's just Diggle with a helmet. Yeah, he's just Diggle with a helmet and, like, some, some you know, body armor. Gotcha. But, I mean, whatever. It's it's cool. I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm totally excited about finally seeing some Thea in action. I hope they don't change his character too much, though. I don't think Because I like will. Diggle's character being the quiet, yet brash, hard-ass. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they will. I think they'll stay the same. Um, from what we saw in the trailer, we obviously get some more... Speedy in action. Right, right. Which is awesome. Her costume looks great. Yeah. I like that they're going to be playing into the effects that the Lazarus Pit has had on her. Because... I didn't know she would have yeah, the Lazarus Yeah, she died. Pit. Oh, really? And was resurrected in the Lazarus Pit. Okay. Because I saw in the trailer, uh, what's her name in the Lazarus Pit? Uh, Laurel's sister. Right, right, right. Okay. Which for some reason I can't remember her name now. Yeah, but me it's neither. Not important. Um... Yeah. I well, so, so Sia died, and then they brought her back, and then it was all this talk about how, like, the Lazarus Pit changes you, and you'll... But there was no real change showed in Thea. Okay. But apparently, so now they're going to delve into it. Is Roy still part of the show? I don't remember if I saw him Roy in the Roy was in last season a little bit. He left, like, in... I, I don't know if it was season... I think it was last season. Roy pretty much takes the blame... For being the arrow. Okay. And they put him in jail. Because Oliver turns himself over to the police. Mm-hmm. And then Roy steps in in the suit. And it's like, no, he's not. You know, I'm the arrow. And he goes to prison and then they break him out. And then he takes off and goes into hiding. Gotcha. And then after Thea gets resurrected, 
like she takes off and goes to find him and then he gives her uh they spend like a night together and then he disappears on her again but he leaves her the red arrow suit hmm. or the arsenal suit whatever the hell you want to call it right so that's how you get and then she showed up at the end of season four during the big battle season three season three my bad so she shows up at the end of season three in the costume and she's and you know her and Oliver, it was a nice scene between her and Oliver that was really good where he's like oh you know it's uh you know you look good and she's like thanks she's like you know the, you can call me Red Arrow and he's like nah I've already told everyone to call you Speedy hmm. so you know it kind of plays onto the comic book thing right which I appreciate um it looks it looks good man you know, you got Damien Dark coming in. Yeah, I saw that. Um, they're going to be adding a bunch of villains. John Constantine's coming. Like John, oh my god, dude. I'm gonna just that right one now. scene where he's just sitting that there lighting scene, up the cigarette. Constantine chills. Yeah. I was like, yes! Um, I also read it online that Automatopoeia is going to really make an appearance. Really? So, for fans of Kevin Smith, Automatopoeia. Nice. Kind of crazy. But uh, that season looks good, man. I'm excited to I'm excited to, to get into it. I can't wait. We're only maybe what a month away or so, right? At this point, um, moving on to more comic book shows, the the Punisher season two Daredevil. Um, Do we have know, a word when that's coming out? I I don't know. It'll be sometime next year. Uh, Burnsall looks awesome as the Punisher. Yeah. The only reason I'm bringing this up is the article that I happened to read about it was like, will Burnthal's Punisher finally bury, you know, the bad taste left in people's mouth by the movie Punishers? Dude. That's a good question. Why? Why? No, it's not a good, it's a horrible question, because why is there no respect given to the Thomas Jane Punisher movie? Because of John Travolta, I think. Really? Nobody liked John Travolta. Like, I, but that's perfect. John Travolta sucks. So you have easy initiative, you have an easy gateway into hating John Travolta's character because John Travolta's already a douche. So it just works out, you dislike him already, you know what I'm saying? Right, I thought right. it was a great movie, man. It wasn't overly special effects laden, it was like an old school 70s action movie. Yeah. Versus like the, the, the Warzone movie, which was horrible. You know, I'm a big fan of, you know, I can't remember. I, I really hate when I go, I'm a big fan of someone, and then I can't remember their names. It's the guy that plays um, Volstag. Uh, um, Steven, Steven Peter, no. R- Something Stevenson. Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson, Ray yes. Stevenson. So his Punisher movie, I didn't like at all. It was like over-the-top action. See, I like liked crazy. his. Like, I now, liked his. As far as being like a comic book Punisher that... Uh, I could see how people, some people like that, but to say that all the Punisher movies have just like sucked was a little much, you know. Mm-hmm. Will Burnthal be the best Punisher we see on celluloid? Sure. On celluloid film, I was. It's just, oh, just, you know, a smart ass way to say film. But um, <laughs> so you've got that. I mean, that's gonna be awesome. Um, Ryan Perlman talked about Hellboy 3 more. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't read the article, but I saw it only because I figured you would want to talk about it today. Yeah, he was... He brought up, like, plot points. Like, apparently, you know, Hellboy... The whole idea is that Hellboy is supposed to be the bringer of the... The, the Harbinger. Of the world. Yeah. Yeah. So, they're saying that Del Toro's talked about wanting to play into that. That him and Liz Sherman's kids would be in, involved. Obviously, they would be older. Yeah. One looks normal. One looks like him. And then her, there's he also said that there's a possibility that one of them would be, they would be the opposites. So one would be light, one would be dark. Right. And he was saying, knowing Del Toro's humor, it would be the one that looked like Hellboy that was the angelic one. Right, right. But he said that you know he would love to, he'd love to do it. I say do it, man. Ron Perlman's yeah, not getting any. Uh, he's not getting any younger. If they're not going to do it, they need to do like a, a what was that BPRD. And maybe just recast Hellboy Younger and just do that series of movies. Like, maybe... Because there's been a lot of fans... I mean, we all... You're always happy to get an interpretation of your characters on some kind of, you know, like a film or or a TV show. But when they're not essentially true to what the character is, 
Because, I mean, if you look at, like, Hellboy, like, people really don't appreciate, like, the whole Liz Sherman Hellboy love story. Mm-hmm. It was, like, kind of a thing that a lot of people believe was just a studio tack on. Because, you know, studios you always got to have a love story and everything, you know? Yeah. Um, they would like to see something more of the noir horror straight. Which, I mean, that would be great. But it would be nice to see the Del Toro trilogy get finished off. Yeah, no, I agree. But there's still no, uh, nothing rock solid concrete saying it's going to happen. Gotcha. Um, Chris Evans wants to sign up for, to do Marvel movies forever. Yeah. Which is funny because, you know, Chris Evans was reluctant when he first signed on to play Captain America. And there was talk that he wasn't, I'm sure you heard it, yeah. that he wasn't going to go beyond three movies. Yeah, he wanted to play more of a, the behind-the-scenes yeah. director kind of role. And now he's, like, saying, you know, he'll do them as long as they want to do them. Nice. Which is great. I mean, that... you uh, got to wonder what changed his mind. You know, I, that's... Who knows? I, the only that's, thing I could think of, besides the obvious answer of more money, is maybe he had such a blast doing Civil War. And there's something about Civil War that just sparked it for him. Well, he's he's quoted as saying that, uh, you know, he's never had such a relationship like where, you know, that the movies are going to be great. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's, in the past, he said that he's been on movies and thought, you know, I'm just paraphrasing here. Obviously, is this movie going to suck? You know, am right. I making what's going to be a bad movie? But Marvel's got such a a home run record that he's confident that anything they're going to do is going to be good. So he's willing to stick around. Which, you know, it's awesome. I think he's uh, a great Captain America. Um, you know, Stan Lee came out and said that he's his favorite of all the actors in the Marvel movies. That Chris Evans is his favorite. Nice. And first of all, he said, they. it was funny because Stan was asked, who's your favorite Marvel character actor cinematically? And he said, Chris. Yeah. Which is funny because that's Chris Hollywood. Hollywood, yeah. You know, Evans and then uh, Star-Lord. I forgot his last name. Chris Pratt. Pratt. And then he straight out said that it was Evans. So, I mean, that's good, you know, to... to I, I'm happy about that because I'm not... I liked uh, Mackie. I like Falcon in the movies. Yeah. I'm not in a hurry to see him as Captain America. I'm not really in a hurry to see Bucky as Captain America either. Correct. So, I would like to see... I like Chris Evans, man. You know, it's the only guy... Well, besides Ben Affleck now, who's played two superheroes... Yeah, and it's gotten it's gotten better. So which that that should give you some more hope on Batfleck. Yeah, because Daredevil, eh, not so much. Batman, it's gonna it looks like it's gonna be awesome. But uh, you know, more Captain America without dude. I'm really stoked to see that Civil War movie. That's all I gotta say, yeah. man. Hell yeah, like dude. That yes, movie looks awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, more Marvel cinema cinematic news. Uh, apparently, there's been infighting at Marvel Studios. I don't know if you've. Yeah, the uh, the guy who was uh, in charge of the Marvel Studios brand itself. Kevin Feige. Not him. The other guy. There's or not Marvel Studio. I guess the Marvel brand or Marvel Studios. Entertainment. He's yeah. in he's charge of Marvel Entertainment. Um, he's this president. Bob, CEO, I think um, Bob Igor or whatever his name is. I no, it's not Bob not Igor. It was. Um, give me one second, and I'll pull his name up. Like they transferred it, so he's he's the guy that's going to be in charge of like all the Marvel animation stuff, right? You know, with, with and uh, he'll be like right above Jeff Loeb and all this stuff. Whereas the Marvel movies now are a separate brand because the Marvel movies are now not under Marvel but under Disney themselves, right? Well, I I guess it was that he was. It's you know sources go back and forth online. I really can't pin down what's fact and what's just opinion, right? Um, because people are saying that. Like, it's, uh, I believe the dude's name was, he was the CEO of Marvel Entertainment. Isaac Perlmutter. Isaac Yankum. But anyway, so, he was also part of this creative committee that was, uh, it was uh, President Alan Fine, publisher Dan Buckley, CCO John Caseta, and Brian Michael Bendis, and Perlmutter, who, uh, would meet up and give notes on the films to Phage. And apparently, you know, people are saying, like, uh, he was just sick of it because they were like... I, I don't really... It's it's hard to say. People are blaming... Some people are saying it's the Marvel community that are screwing things up. 
Some people are saying Phage that is screwing things up. Some people are saying, some sources are saying that it was just Disney itself wasn't happy with Age of Ultron. I heard that. I have heard that. And uh, and I find that one hard to believe because how can you be angry about a movie that made over a billion dollars? Very true. Because I don't think Disney looks at, you know, oh, this movie, uh, the script was horrible or I didn't like it. They look at the bottom line, which is always the dollar. Yeah, always. That's always. just the way the companies operate. And then people have said, you know, if you look at, um, if you look at the uh, suggestions via the internet about the movies, is that the films that the Marvel, um, the Marvel Creative Committee was essentially a part of giving notes to Phajon were Iron Man, Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America First Avenger, Captain America Winter Soldier, and Captain America Civil War. Okay. Which, obviously, we've seen all these movies, but Civil War, all those movies were good, with the exception of First Avenger, I wasn't really a huge fan of. Um, now, those are, they're saying those are the movies that were most influenced by the committee. Now, the ones that were had the least or no influence were Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, and Age of Ultron. All the, in my the, opinion. The three that the people complain about yeah. the most. Well, see, I would throw Thor on that list. Now, I didn't they're like saying the Hulk, Ant-Man, and the Thor movies are somewhere in the middle. Mm. So it was kind of even input from the committee and what Phage wanted to do. They really, But this is all speculation, too, from people. Right. Uh, more specifically, Bleeding Cool is where I actually put together that list. But so, I mean, I could, I could see it, but it's going back and forth, you know. Right. Some people are saying that phage is too much, and some are saying that the committee wanted too much involvement. So, I mean, I guess it's really just a wait and see kind of thing. Yeah, I don't care about anything behind the scenes as long as it continues to deliver us a great product that we've been getting. And I think, I honestly think Civil War is what Avengers is going to have the feeling that Avengers 2 should have had. Yeah. Because Avengers 2 was great, don't get me wrong. But it just, it just seemed like it was missing something. Like, it seemed like it was another placeholder movie like Ant-Man. Right. You know? Now, and that's not to say that Ant-Man was bad, because I liked Ant-Man a lot. My mother-in-law wants to see Ant-Man. It was a good movie. I was kind of surprised. It was fun. It was a fun movie. Um, but I just think that it's a placeholder, because, let's, like I said, Civil War is the one everybody wants to see. And right. the last movie everybody, quote-unquote, wanted to see was the first Avengers movie. No, yeah, totally. Civil, dude, Civil War looks uh, like with... Everything that's packed in the Civil War, I just can't wait to see how they're going to do it. You know, it's that's going to be a great movie. It's not going to get here. Next year cannot get here soon enough. And I hate to say that because, you know, as we all get older, we hate to see our candle burning out that much quicker. Man, if I'm not just excited for next year's slew of movies, man. I honestly think it starts in three months. What are we, in September? Starts It starts in December with Star Wars, I believe. Oh, my God, Star Wars is going to be amazing. I believe I say it starts with Star Wars in December, and then when you finally come off that December slash holiday buzz, yeah, you got Deadpool in February. Even though, let me say this: I was talking to a, a, a friend of the show, a friend of ours. I'm not going to mention his name, but I'm sure he'll Facebook message me if he listens to this episode. I kind of doubt he will because he wasn't involved though. But you never know; I could be wrong. He, me, and him talked about Star Wars the other day, and he said that he felt like that J.J. Uh, Abrams was like his designs were uninspired. Really? Yeah. He said that he felt like while George Lucas's writing sucked, that his designs and character creations were like off the charts awesome. And he feels like that J.J. Abrams is giving us a bunch of stuff we've already seen. Hmm. As far as the design and the look of a lot of things. I don't know because I see I, don't, I would have to disagree and not in the, in the sense of saying that this guy who I think I know who you're talking about um, I, I can't say he's wrong, but I can't say he's right, only because we haven't been shown a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's too early to really sit and judge well, and look he, at that. He's saying based off of, like, what's her name? Ray, I believe is the female character. Yeah. Name, that we've already seen the tattooing look, even though she's not on... I mean, because her costume is kind of reminiscent of, Star, of Luke Skywalker's first costume when you right. first meet him. Although she's apparently not even on the same planet. She's not on Tatooine. Okay. Um, Maybe that's just casual dress. He's saying that the stormtroopers look is kind of uninspired. It's not really changed at all. I feel like it's, it has. It has. From, it looks more like Daffy or Donald Duck. He doesn't appreciate the look of uh, uh, Phasma. 
Is that okay? Name? Yeah, Captain Phasma. That he he doesn't appreciate the fact that you can't tell that it's a woman. See, I didn't know it was a woman. Yeah, it's really uh, Phasma's yeah, a woman. Christine. Uh, oh my gosh, she plays Brienne of Tarth on Game of Thrones. Thrones girl, you gotta watch the show, dude. It's so awesome. I didn't know that Cas- Captain yeah, Phasma was a woman. woman. That's she's, cool. She's reminds me of Metroid. Then she's a badass, dude. Some Sam Saram. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, he's irritated that you can't tell that it's a woman under that costume, and that it also just looks like a stormtrooper with some extra armor, shiny armor on it. Well, that yeah. Um, you know, the way I look at it is, remember how Grievous was like the commander of the droids, so he kind of looked like a souped-up droid. That's how I look at it. Phasma is now the the head of the troopers. There's, you know, what my speaking of Grievous. It, no, I completely agree with you a hundred percent on that. Speaking of Grievous, that character, they create such great characters, and they don't put enough of them on the screen. Like if you actually go back and delve into the story of Grievous, like and how he becomes to be what he is forgiven yeah great dude excellent story really excellent story like he started out as a, he's like essentially a cyborg okay which people some people will try to argue and say he's not but I mean clearly he had a heart and lungs and stuff and the eyes but he was a, a humanoid creature mm-hmm. at first and then through you know battles and being which all would also stuff. explain why he had a cough yeah well that that actually was explained in the Clone Wars cartoon that was on Cartoon Network he had a brutal battle against Mace Windu mm. and was injured. And that's why he was always wheezing and stuff. Because he got messed up in that battle. My thing with Star Wars is I hope that this new direction that Disney's taking it doesn't um, put the stink on Star Wars, so to speak. Because you get Force Awakens in December. But then next year... Rogue One? Yeah, you get Rogue One. And then you get Episode Seven after that. And then it's like there's going to be one like every single year now. Until then, they yeah, get to episode there's, nine, there's apparently going to be a bunch of standalone movies. Right, that's what I'm saying. There's one every year. Like yeah. they're going to do something every year, which I don't know if I agree with. I think I think that's one of the the draws of Star Wars is that it only comes along. It's like a Dr. Dre album. It only comes along every so often, you know. But right, let's well, wait and I, see. I, I hear you. I hear you. You know, um, because let's face it. If that that's the lag the first quote-unquote franchise and the last quote-unquote franchise. There's nothing before it and there's nothing that's going to be after it. Yeah, no. You know, nothing that's going to compare. And if they screw that up, man... I honestly, from what little bit that we've seen, I am totally excited about it. Um, I can't wait to see it. I really can't. That'll be the first movie in a couple of years, I think since Thor Dark World, that I went to go see at midnight. I actually have... Because it comes out December December 18th, the Friday, is officially the release date. But, you know, you can go at midnight, uh-huh. so the 17th. I requested the 18th off. Yeah. So I can go on late night on the 17th and watch it. Because that's a movie that I'm not going to be able to wait till that weekend or a week after. No, I have to go see it that night. So I will be at the theater late night watching it. Nice. Who's coming with I'm I'm there, dude. Yeah, right. That one, no, I'm serious. I'm not going to believe no it. No BS, I'm there. I don't there. believe it. I'm, I'm there, man. It. It's Star Wars. This ain't Avengers Age of Ultron, okay? I don't which, believe it. Which I had really no, like, really didn't want to see that movie. I just, I don't, I'll I really wait. don't want to see it again. But I'll, Star Wars, I cannot wait for. I'll wait till December 17th. You're like, like dude, uh, uh, where yeah, you at? Come I'm on, there, let's go. Man. I'll wait. Come pick me up. We'll go. It's date. But not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Pick me up with some wings, have a couple beers, make fun of people that dress up like Jedi's. I'm there, man. I'm there for that. That I can't miss. So speaking of Star Wars, uh, that was a weird segue, but I guess Disney. Now that the the house that's the mouse owns everything, pretty much. You know, it's uh, it, it was just funny because we segued. Into I wouldn't Star be Wars. surprised if like Disney sat at like the table. When, like, the president made decisions and stuff like that. You know, like, there's a Disney rep there because Disney secretly rules the United right. States. Or rules the world. Right. You know? The, the world of the mouse. Would that really, like, would that surprise you? If Disney came out to be this big organization, no. underground, controlling shots. Story. It would, wouldn't it? it? It wouldn't surprise me. Um, c 3 is going to count. Why? Well, because, you know, he's going to be in Force Awakens. Right. 
with a red arm, which is kind of weird. Okay. I don't know what's up with that, but hey, apparently he's getting a comic book. Okay. So there's speculation that R2-D2 will be getting one also, which, I mean, really, do you need a... I, I could see C-3PO at least can communicate in the English language. Right. But, but R2-D2, what are we going to get a little boop, 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 boop? And you see the yeah. editor's box on the bottom translation. Right. You have it like on every panel. <laughs> I don't see why they just wouldn't give them one together. Yeah, I don't that's see the case. why either. Um, I don't know because they're I. I haven't seen anything that sh- that says that he's in this movie. Who are two? Yeah. I thought he. I thought I saw him in like some of the previous. Uh... I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think they've even shown C three P O anything. I think the only thing, the only reason we know that C-3PO is going to be in the new movie is because of Force Friday, which is last week, Friday, Force Friday, the big release of all the Force Awakened toys. The start of them. Well, the start, anyway, yeah. I know you wrote a blog on that. What is your feelings on Force Friday? First of all, I didn't get to go. Do you Um, want to go? Yes and no. Um, I wanted to go only so I can get a first-hand um, experience uh, and be able to talk to other fans in line why they were there specifically what toys were they looking for um, just to get uh, a general feel you know the excitement for what that which is Star Wars in general because I mean that's the first official thing that kicks it off you know now from Friday on it's we're, we're, we're off to the races in terms of when the movie opens right. um, so that's why I wanted to go for that reason if I had money to spend yeah, I want to go because I wanted a, I want the Black Series six inch figures, um, but other than that, you know, the, knowing I think that I wasn't buying them anyway, what kind of set me off to wanting not wanting to go, which I know it doesn't sound professional, but it is what it is. I, whatever, I think it was a huge waste of time. Well, from what I understand, it depends where you went. Some Toys R Us were fully stocked, some were terribly understocked, uh, but there was a lot of people who decided not to go, and certain WalMarts didn't open, certain WalMarts did. Some people weren't sure if Walmarts were going to open for that extra hour. Supercenters obviously open 24 hours. Right. So a lot of people ended up going to Walmart the next morning, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, and they said there were still full pegs and people were picking stuff up the next morning. So. Whereas, unlike the litany of pictures we've seen on Facebook, where people, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever, where pegs are just empty. Yeah. Um, our Your boy, Dennis Barger went out said he was the 10th or 15th person in the line or something like that yeah he said, said that, the pegs were cleared yeah they were clear absolutely clear um well toys know, r us had a limit as yeah, well toys r us had a three three item per person limit three per per kind of yeah. item so like you can get three funko pops right. you can get three six inch figures you know you can get three three quarter figures like that so three three lightsabers right so. just specific character three what do you mean? Like you could you could have bought like three of every figure in the Black series. No. Oh, really? They no. limited that much. Huh? Yeah, it was wow. just like three. You can get three of these, three of these, three of these. Well, good for Toys R Us, man. You know, because, but you, you couldn't know, get like two Chewbacca's. Like and as you know, as you've already so kindly pointed out immediately on Facebook, scalpins already going down. Oh look, here's four figures from the Black series. Four figures for a hundred and twenty yeah. bucks. Like, Come dude, on. really? Come on, man. Like you can get stuff, all five for 100 Like, that stuff isn't going to be everywhere in two months. Yeah, exactly. With, especially with Christmas coming up. Dude, come on. Yeah. Did we not learn anything from Star Wars Episode One? Apparently not. Seriously. Apparently not. So I had no... I didn't care. You know, like I said, our buddy called. That's actually part of the reason he said he wanted to go, too. Is he wanted to talk to people and just see the fan excitement. And I was like, dude. I'm like, you're not going to get any fans. You're just going to get scalpers. Right. So I'm going to get... Right. Scalpers. There might be some fans out there, but it's going to be a buttload of scalpers. I know Lou Bernal went because he posted pictures of his haul. Yeah. And dude, man, that guy buys some toys, dude. Yeah. Like, he had like five of each different stormtroopers. Because he's, like, he's building the trooper army. Well, yeah. I mean, so yeah, I'm not I'm in no way, shape, or form calling Lou a scalper. He's right. Yeah, no, because he's a true we, collector. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, so it was, you, you had some out there, but I think there was a lot of just scalping going on. Um, when I went to Meyer to grocery shop uh, Friday during the day, Star Wars music the whole time. Really? Da, da, you know, da. I have not gone to a store since Friday, yeah. so I whole have no time. idea. Whole time I was in the store, man. 
It's weird. Or not even since Friday, since before there are, Friday. You know so. how they have the ladies giving out samples? Every sample is with some kind of Star Wars stuff. Really? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Like Star Wars SpaghettiOs, Star Wars cereal was all like all over the place, dude. Dude, speaking of Star Wars cereal, check this out. Earlier last week, uh, we had to go to uh, Walmart real quick, right? So we walk in, and Jenny's pushing a cart. And uh, they've got cereal for sale. They've got, like, I think it's like four bucks for two family sized boxes of Lucky Charms. You know, and they had a whole, like, all these General Mill stuff. And she looks at my kid and she's like, hey, do you want some cereal? You know, this is, it's on sale. This is a lot of cereal. She's like, yes, I want some cereal. She grabs the box of Lucky Charms. She stops. She looks over to her right and they have the Star Wars cereal. Dude, she couldn't pick up that box of Darth Vader cereal quick enough. And she just throws that in the cart. And it changed, like looking at the price difference and the size difference, like seriously, kid? And she's like, no, I want the Darth Vader Star Wars cereal. I was like, that's my kid. That's my kid. I had nothing to do with that. You know, I was just not like, hey, get this, get it. Nope. Which is, which is, she made that on her. And she's only seen Star Wars once. Which is essentially just Lucky Charms. She watched... Uh, a New Hope once. Yeah. That's it. Only because it had a princess in it. And then she was mad because she didn't look like a princess. Nice. But she so knows. The shelves were empty at Meyer. Okay. They had Star Wars stuff in two different places. They had like a, one of those aisle like walkthrough caps. Yeah. And then they had an aisle where I'd say half of one side of the aisle was the one to start. There was nothing, man. Doesn't surprise nothing. me. Um, they See, had a but bunch Meyer of tends to chips. understock everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. Case in point, those Ultimate Spider-Man cards. I'm still looking for let them. Let it go. Never, I'm not going to let it go because I'm going to end up paying thirty dollars for them. And if that's the friggin' case, I should have just bought them six months ago. Um. Anyway, they didn't really have much. They had a lot of the Hot Wheels. They had Star they didn't Wars. Have those, though. <laughs> they had Star Wars black spaceships. Yeah. What's up with that, man? Come on. They brought back micro machines. See that? Yeah, I did. Like, just for Star Wars? I haven't seen Micro Machines in years, and now they're Star Wars Micro Machines. Yeah. But, I mean... I'm well, what company impressed. picked up the license? Because who bought them out? Because um, Micro Machines was by Galoob. Kind of... I would, maybe Mattel, maybe? Hasbro. It's got to be Hasbro. Yeah, I guess. Because Hasbro's the one pumping out the Star Wars stuff. Yeah. Got to be them. But seriously, why do a line of... I don't know, up? because Mattel pumps out their Star Wars stuff. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's weird. Why do the... I didn't understand the Black Series on the Starships when you have Hot Wheels doing the Starships. It's a separate line. Like, the Black Series 6-inch figures. They've got Force Awakens Black Series. And yeah. then they have the regular Black Series 6-inch figures. It's a separate line. It doesn't integrate. But they're, like, a lot of the same ships. Doesn't matter. Like, what's the point? Collector. Are you I seriously think, asking what's yeah, the point? I think it's stupid. We're collectors. I think it's stupid. We're collectors. And they even have the little it. stands. Right. The same as the Hot Wheels ones. They're, like, identical, just in different yeah, packaging. Exactly. Ridiculous! I can't believe you're bringing this up. I am. Wow. I think it's ridiculous. It can be said for a lot of other toy lines we collect, or that I collect. That's ridiculous. It is what it it's is. It's ridiculous. That's dumb. I don't like it. As a matter of fact, at this point, you know, I was I was collecting those Hot Wheels Starships, and then when I did my wall of Hot Wheels a couple weeks ago... Uh, Which to, I don't understand, but we'll get to that To keep later. him pacified, because he's only two... I just started giving him my starships because they have them all in stock now at Walmart. Okay. You know, even though I bought them off of Walmart.com two months ago for like half the price. Yeah. I'm just kidding, you know, because a lot of the cards got back because you know all that. So I just give them to them. And now they've released such an overwhelming amount of them. I don't, I don't even think I want to collect them. <laughs> Star Wars, man, it's crazy. It's just, you know, freaking scalpers, dude. You're all over the place. I'm all over the place today. Yeah, with, you with are. The Star Wars stuff. It's just, oh. I mean, I I don't know, man. Boo's going to be awesome. I could give two craps about the toys. Because honestly, they ain't going to do anything for anybody. I'm still sitting on episode one action figures upstairs. Are you really? Yep. A lot of them or not? No, not anymore. I give most of them to the kid. Sealed? Yeah, I got two of them left. That's it. Who do you got? I've got uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi and uh, Mace Windu. No. I opened my mace window, my black Jesus. Well, it's a song. She's like, what the hell is this, a black Jesus? Because, you know, he's got that the cloak thing on. <laughs> and, uh, oh, my God, what's his name? You know, the guy that died in episode one. Qui-Gon. Um, Qui-Gon Jinn, yeah. Those are the only two I got left. It reminds me of, uh, I, you know, it's funny how much attention episode one 
action figures are getting now because of the Force Awakens stuff since Force Friday. Uh, I saw the meme where the guy's carrying like a whole butt butt tone of Episode One figures. He's got one in his mouth, and it's like in a couple of years, his things are gonna be worth millions or whatever it is. And now I'm seeing like I I, I seen that um, yesterday or not yesterday. I this, saw that um, same picture, but it said, "Didn't we learn anything from Episode One?" Yeah, that one too. Um, on Saturday when I helped Dave move his storage unit, mm-hmm. he's like, you know anybody who's interested in Star Wars figures? I'm like, what kind? You know, thinking the Black Series stuff, he's like, oh, and he opens three totes full of, like, Power of the Force and Episode One figures, oh. Min on card, uh, the box <laughs> vehicles and stuff, like Jabba and Han Solo, he's got the troopers and, and the speeders, all, he's just like, yeah, it's just they're just there. I'm like, no, nah, man. And now you bring up your episode one stuff. And I remember Dave's like, do you want them? And I'm like, man, I gave all my episodes. Well, I didn't have any episode ones. I had like four or five. But then like episode two, the saga collection, I had good 95% of it. Wow. And the same thing with episode three. And I couldn't give yeah. those things away. I only have two so figures. I don't know if three. I would ever get back into that. Because you know me, I'm a completist. So yeah, it's like, no. it's got to be something where somebody's got like 90% of the set already. But I was like, would I even want to get in there? Because I've got enough stuff already as it is wondering... When I display this stuff, where am I going to... I'm even looking at my WWE Elites, uh-huh. thinking that I'm going to display them on a shelf because they have the name and the image. So I could just display them that way in safe space as opposed to putting them on a wall. Uh, I know. I, I, I uh, wouldn't even want to go that route. It just looks terrible. I know. That's like people that collect pops and they don't like display... They inbox collect pops and they don't display the front of the box like I have here. Right, they right. They just do the side. Yeah. Where you have the image and... The, the, no. Right. No. Right. What's the point? No, I agree. It's like, hey, look, I just... You know, I, but what I, if... I, you got to look at it in terms of uh, collections like mine. I've got a million these, other things I get to display. Choose. Pick and choose, because at some point you get bored of looking at stuff, you can switch it out. Well, I used to do that when my in my mom's basement. Every six months, I would swap something. I'd swap a series out. But yeah, no, Star Wars figures, I'll never collect those. I'm sticking just with those Hot Wheels. Uh, I'm, no. I, was I do the, the I do the six inch black series. I, I don't was going to get into the six inch black series, but I don't like the paint applications on it. I'll never go like back that. to the three and three quarters. I can't. Like they just look like crap. I can't unless somebody comes at me and they're like, "Look, I've got the entire series or like ninety five percent of you know episode one, two, three, whatever it is, and you're only missing like one or two figures, yeah. and they're going to give it to me like next to almost free, then I might just take them. But other than that, I'm not going to go out and just be like, "Hey, I need to." get these like no I, I just I can't. bought two episode three figures too I bought Mace Windu and I bought General Grievous that's it I had most of them because I, I, I set up the display when that movie came out yeah. at Walmart so I got first dibs on I everything was, I was thinking about opening them when I get the display case and like putting them in like a battle scene and then I looked at how much they're going for online and I'm not opening that Grievous really yeah I have to pay like 30 bucks to replace them wow bucks, and I'm not gonna do that I'll wow. just keep them on the card it's probably the most expensive one out of all of them. Probably. No, then you got the Lava Vader from Target. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going off on a tangent here. Totally. Yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got this week. It's Star Wars. You can't help a tangent. Star Wars There's so much to talk about. I suppose. You know, I didn't even mention the the their gay characters have added to Star Wars. I'm so just you know. the what? Yeah, there's this last thing. There's a new novel coming out, and the character, the main character of the book, is is gay. But. Is the novel in canon? It is. Okay, so it's the first one. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. So, yeah, who cares? Is that really... I I don't care. It's like I said before, like... Or we've said on past episodes, why does sexuality matter? It it doesn't. You know? That they have to say, oh, this guy is gay or this girl is gay or you know because they don't automatically say well the the leader or uh, the star of this book is a straight character they don't they never say that right that's like how jk rowling i'm sorry no that's her name right yeah the harry potter chick yeah she came out and said after everything's all said and done that dumbledore is gay okay why why did you have to say that what does it even matter right who cares does that play any any word to the story of Harry Potter at all, does him being gay have anything to do with any f***ing thing that's going on? No, it does not. Nope. And with that said, I'm done. <laughs> well, <laughs> all it. right. You got, you got anything to add? No, I'm good, man, besides the normal plugs. Um, go back, listen to this week's episode of The Lockup. Uh, check out past episodes of The Spinner Rack and The Lockup. Check out... Uh, just past episodes of everything we've ever done on YouTube. I mean, tons of shows on there. 
uh, the current shows, you know, obviously Spinner Act, The Lock Up, Remixed Reviews, uh, Let's Talk Toys coming soon, uh, Retired Shows, Comics Remixed, The 101, um, there's another one I'm forgetting, Collector's Corner. Um, there's, there's just tons of material, all the interviews we've ever done, all the spotlights we've done at people's collect, uh, people's uh, stores, actually. And just go back and bask in the greatness of all the stuff we've done. And, um, you know, if you want to contact us, feel free, Junior, Brian, or Alex at ComicsRemix.com. Get us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash ComicsRemix, Twitter at ComicsRemix. Um, am I forgetting any? Remix Shy Town Cylon on Instagram. Um, I think that does it. Website's yeah. coming soon. Website. Uh, Very soon. Uh, yeah, we're blogging now. Um, we don't blog about every single thing because, as I pointed out, we are not the news. We just like to dissect the news. Um, so there's going to be times where there's a big headline and it just probably might not even interest either of us and we'll just skip it. Yeah. You wonder why. Hey, why didn't Comics Remix talk about this? Yeah, Dude, we don't care. Yeah, because we don't care. <laughs> you know, we like we're not a news website. Yeah, I can't stress no. that enough. We are not news. So I, I can't tell you how many comic websites there are out there that just put out stuff that's not even related to anything they're talking about. It's just not, just like you know, like you can go, like for example, Rus I, I follow WrestleZone.com. I, I I use them a lot. That's where I get my wrestling stuff from. But they post tons and tons of headlines per day that's not going to be us because we're not going to sit there for one and copy every headline they put up yeah no you know we just pick and choose if it's and... interesting to us we'll worry about it yeah exactly and if it's interesting you you'll read what we wrote exactly so um there will be days where we probably won't have a post but you know um it, it's got to be we're planning at least one to two posts per day minimum but you never know we got lives we don't we'll get paid see. for this yeah for now <laughs> when, it, when it becomes an actual job, then they'll probably you'll see an influx. Oh yeah, you get creation. tired of it. Yeah, but uh, until then, enough of the rambling. I'm Brian, that's Junior, sitting on the couch because I ain't got no sleep last night. This has been a wreck. We'll see you back here next week. Peace. <laughs>